Welcome to another episode of The Handsome Pod. It's your gal fortune famester. <laughs> and also me, Mae Martin. Well, and it's me, Tig, as well. I'm here, too. Would you Woo! believe? I believe it. Because every time we do this, the three of us show up. That's, That's true. half the battle. It is half of the battle. <laughs> what is the other half? Getting through looking the pod. Ha- looking handsome. Yeah, yeah, looking handsome is a good portion of the battle. Well, yeah. I'm going to respond to Fortune. I'm going to say, you look dandy, kid. I already said that before. I appreciate I said, that. You look like a pretty little lady. You know we have a new sweatshirt that says Pretty Little Lady in our merch store, and I'm going to be rocking that thing <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a I've lot. Got, I mean, I already... I'm constantly like correcting people on my pronouns and like, and so just to add confusion to the fire, maybe I'll wear a pretty little lady <laughs> sweater <laughs> just to really <laughs> mess with people. Might yeah, as well. You should just create chaos. Yeah. Keep everyone guessing all the time. We could also make a, a sweatshirt that says pretty little they them. Oh, that might be good. Oh, look at I could that. wear a hat that says little cowboy, uh-huh. <laughs> a sweater that says pretty little lady, <laughs> and then a sticker that says they them or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, my dream, because I have run into just hairy, burly, straight men that love this podcast, and it excites me so much that they're in on this, and I really hope they're going to kick down the cash for a pretty little lady. Y'all better uh, kick too. down that cash, baby. Kick it down. Kick it kick down. down that cash. Get I've never you. heard of that phrase before. You better kick down that cash. I- <laughs> Somebody said that to me, I think, like 35 years ago, and my brain went, Well, I'll be using that again. <laughs> Thank Where you for that old ditty. From? Do you think that's like there was an old farmer at the top of the stairs, and then his wife was like, Kick down that cash or something? Like, Kick down that cash. You yeah. hear me? Girl. <laughs> she was like, I'm Girl. going. Girl. I you better to kick down that cash. <laughs> You're not coming back in this house. What uh, what town is this character from? <laughs> the old west. That's the old that west town. town. That that old west town. You better kick down <laughs> that cash now. <laughs> Don't you come back in this house if you hadn't kicked down that cash. I like that they they keep all their money in coins too. Yeah, and pile at the top of the stairs. Because you can't trust the banks back then. Because they <laughs> yeah. they just stole your money. You can't trust them now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Finally. All my Finally. money's disappearing. <laughs> we're taking down the banks. That's where <laughs> who we're going after next. If you went and checked your um, bank balance one day, if you're using like an ATM and you look in it and there's accidentally... 400 million dollars in it would you that's say a anything? lot that's a lot to just accidentally be in your account that's in my account right now 400, 400 million mil? yes oh, to having a, a new yacht propeller built hat? in amsterdam <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> are you saying what would you do people always think they can just keep that but yeah. the bank's always like oh we eventually they're like we made a mistake you're not supposed to have that you sound like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> hey, don't ask me any questions. <laughs> That's what I always say to Stephanie when, we, uh, when we're when we getting into something. I'll say something and I'll say uh, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> when you're getting into something. I, I know. I, went, I thought you were about to be talking se- sexy. sexual. That's what I thought. Like right before you have sex, you go, don't ask me any more qu- questions. No though. more questions. This is a no question zone. It's only sexy time. <laughs> or no, if if I'm talking about something and as I'm speaking, I'm realizing I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'll say right. no more questions. Yeah. <laughs> that's, good, that's, good. <laughs> that's better than admitting you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so no more questions. Now, May, I haven't had a chance to ask you about this. It's been a couple of weeks since this happened and I kept forgetting to ask you. Uh-huh. Um, you were like all over my google uh, really yeah because uh, you had a big announcement i mean it's like so, you mean about my relation my relation your relation yeah my tell re- tell, tell me you're still hands- together right <laughs> well unfortunately we- <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine it was a big deal because you guys sort of like a f- like we we all knew i i honestly didn't know it was like a 
not like a secret, but I didn't know it was. I didn't know, realize people didn't know. I, I didn't really realize people didn't know. And and yeah, basically, you thought people didn't know when you said I'm in. I'm heavily involved with this one woman. I didn't know they knew who it was. Well, though. of course they didn't. Well, I don't know. I thought I was being pretty obvious because I uh, we're like all over each other's Instagram. But yeah. yeah, it was it was pretty exciting. But I did not expect. Well, okay, this is what happened. Parv, now can I use your name now? Parv. Yeah. I mean, Parv- you you're the one that officially came out on Instagram. Parvati. Uh, well, okay, Parvati. she did. So Parvati, um, she's about to be in the in Traders, or I guess when this comes out, she'll be, oh, yeah, be airing already. People this, are excited about this show. Oh man, I'm pumped! It's a reality show. It's my dream. And uh, what know, is like, it? It's like toxic lying in a in a castle. <laughs> Well, you know, like, <laughs> well, for wait for people who don't know, Parvati is from the Survivor franchise, very popular on there, and yeah. this, uh, this is who you're in a relationship with. She's a real. She's in and the live the, with, and I'm heavily involved with and live with, and she's uh, she's in like the Mount Rushmore of Survivor, and I'm like, to me, Survivor contestants are bigger than any actor, musician, celebrity. Like I have seen every season really? multiple times. Oh, like. <laughs> it's in i could write a phd thesis on survivor that is so wild so you were like admiring her from afar, afar for a bit i mean like a casual 15 years probably yeah whoa <laughs> for real yeah. what yeah. season did she start on well uh she was on season 13 and then she came back season 16 and, and won that season and then she yeah. was a runner-up season 20 she was a runner-up here's my question though could she really survive on an island oh yeah big time really oh. she She's won Survivor. athletic Hello. she can well, start a fire with a flint i haven't seen this in person but i i assume could she hide in thailand <laughs> eating <laughs> thai food and with no a bonnet on her <laughs> 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 shout out to past episodes <laughs> all the past episodes i just pictured as little cartoons and they're like yay so you had followed her and, and had had loved her work in survivor you were very impressed with her skills yeah yeah anyways so I'm, <laughs> now i'm getting embarrassed so anyway so she is about to do this reality show called traders and so they she's about to do all this press for it and she was like oh it's so funny they contacted me and they said um you know you have to say stuff about yourself and your identity so that they know what press to send you for and there was like a drop down menu of like are you like lgbt or mm-hmm. straight or an ally and she was like yeah so i, I was said i'm to- i'm an ally and i was like um you're like I, you're kind of more than that <laughs> yeah and she was like oh i i didn't really get what that meant i was like well, yeah, it's like, sure you're, you're like thanks for all the support <laughs> she's like i'm rooting you on yeah. Go, May. <laughs> <laughs> so then she like emailed them back and was like oh apparently i'm su- i'm queer i'm super queer actually so forget it i'm not an ally i was like no you're still an ally but um, you're like i'm a queer ally yeah and then uh so i think off the back of that she was like it was new year's eve and yeah she was just like i want to post these pics but we truly did not expect i had like friends in england being like saw you on in the newspaper like what it was insane i can't believe anyone anyone gives a shit you were in my google alerts really what's happening but what are you alerting what are you uh, just on (laughs) may uh no because we're in the podcast (laughs) yeah i also no i haven't watched survivor (laughs) In a long time, but no, I, because we do this podcast together, there was some handsome, um, you know, adjacent hmm. things. Right, right. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, yeah, it, it it was exciting. You got the whole Survivor world really sh- shaken up, but positive feedback, right? Positive feedback. I've never been like publicly in a, like like open really publicly about who i'm dating i I, yeah i'm I'm super private but i'm in i'm in deep man it felt very it felt very (laughs) natural yeah yeah so i'm pumped that's that's awesome awesome. but i will Ah, i'm jinx i'm still gonna be referring to her as the woman i'm heavily involved with okay okay 
Okay. But now we know who you're referring to. Well, we always knew, but everyone else now knows. That Big. seems like new merch. The woman I'm heavily involved with, with an arrow <laughs> pointing the other way on the t-shirt. Yes, that's such a good idea. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty you could, good. Imagine if you if you got that on a tombstone, like you were buried with your spouse, and <laughs> said, "You didn't kick that cash down." <laughs> 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. We should go on a triple date, though. Yeah, let's do For it. For sure. We just got to get fortune to get a kid. Oh, yes. Yeah, so oh, uh, well, <laughs> can my dog come? Yeah, Biggie can come. Can Biggie? my three cats come? Biggie? <laughs> sure. That's, that's very lesbian of you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared of your cat, Tig, after that. Oh, yeah. That, you I, got that scratch across your belly. You got seriously attacked by your cat. I did, but it's coming along pretty well if you'd like to see. Yes, please. Can okay. you tell us what happened? I'm um, sure. May can't um, be the only one with exciting news. <laughs> wait. Oh wait. What are we about? What are we about oh, to see? Oh my god! Wait. Whoa! That's Take straight it. across your belly. You. It's like a kind of Batman villain origin story. What'd you do to piss off your cat? <laughs> Well, my cat, uh, Linus, we have three. There's Fluff, Skip, and Linus. And mm. Linus, precious little animal on this planet, he, um, in his first year of living with us, he very sadly got a plastic bag handle caught around his neck. Oh. So he was trying to run and get away from the plastic bag, and it was on him and making a terrible loud noise oh. so it made him very skittish and it was Aww. just sad because we were trying to like catch him to get the bag off but he was scared and mm -hmm. he's very affectionate but any slight move <laughs> it is like the bag is is right back on his neck and so I was carrying him over to the couch mm -hmm. to have you know a little snuggle time Aww. and and when I pass by the uh bar stools in our in our kitchen i just pushed one of them in out of the way oh lord oh no he, he jumped <sighs> from my arms and dug his claws into my stomach as he was jumping Whoa. and i immediately i mean look I've had cats my whole life and I have had those horrible moments where something scares them and they're on you and they dig in and jump. Mm -hmm. I have never had anything like what happened that day. This and is another level. This, Yeah. It, listen, it's on brand for me, guys. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And so <laughs> as soon as he jumps out of my arms... It was so painful. Yeah. I knew it was really deep, and I immediately moved my T-shirt out away from my stomach because I was like, I am gushing blood. Uh. And for sure, I was just oh dripping blood. I was bruised. My stomach in time became purple. Did he know that he did that no he's did a he cat he doesn't okay. know anything <laughs> did he apologize did he, <laughs> he apologize well, fortune he a paw a paw <laughs> but this is why i'm scared to get cats because um, no don't let it scare you but to me don't let me I, bleeding out <laughs> <turn you. laughs> my intestines don't let my cat going for the jugular send you running may these are loving <laughs> Having a cat to me, it's like you know when you're playing with a balloon and you feel like it could pop at any minute. That happens frequently. I'm I always was gonna say, haven't balloons. played with a balloon, and I don't, I don't know when. You know, when you're bouncing a you balloon. Know, balloon and animals. <laughs> and it's all fun and games, but you know, at any minute, it could, it could pop. Or you know, if you have a if you have a relative that's a little scary, and you know, I you didn't know a cat could do that, just jumping off of. Yeah, you. well, I mean, he used my body as his springboard, and yeah. uh, his claws just went in deep. Did you cry? Yeah, did you cry? No. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> Look <laughs> at me. <laughs> Don't. Not crying. I did not cry. I actually immediately felt so sad for him because I, I, I hate when he gets startled like that. It's so sad. But people were very worried uh, about cat scratch fever, which is a real thing. What's cat? People die what from that? that. 
Well, I don't know that you die. I, I think you have to be like knocking on heaven's door at that point I to think be that people can die from anything. Sure. <laughs> This That's is the right. biggest fight Fortune. that you guys have ever had. Wait, what is Cat Scratch Fever beside a song? Wait, it's um, a song? Oh Isn't boy, right? two against one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Cat yeah, Scratch Ted, Fever. I forgot how yeah, it goes, though. Ted Nugent. Cat oh, Scratch Fever. That, that's why I forgot. <laughs> cat Scratch Fever. I can't believe my Cat Scratch didn't go to your Google alerts. But anyway, I, I know. did have. I was shocked by that as well. Okay, well, I just washed it with soap and water, and everything was fine. Okay, okay so if you start frothing at the mouth a little bit, we'll know. That yeah, you'll know. We'll know. know. We'll know. Whatever. I mean, sometimes, though, I think about, like, if you're a cat, and you said you, you picked him up to take him to the sofa for snuggle time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would love, I wish someone would pick up my whole body and carry me to the sofa. For, but, like, that's that must be very disorientating for an animal they get their whole body picked up and just carried somewhere. Well, here's the thing, though. It's not just out of nowhere. I mean, sometimes it is if I'm like being a little snuggle Needy. hog. Yeah. But um, sometimes you can tell when they're just like hanging around. They're rubbing their face against the wall. They're looking at you, meowing. They're they're wanting some attention, and so I yeah. just want to I want to go back to rubbing their face against the wall. Now yes. is that normal? Is that normal behavior? Yes. Yeah, okay. because there's some sort of glands that are in the mm. cat's face. I don't mean to like take your Mayfax and run here. <laughs> no, but, it's a take uh, it's a tig tip. <laughs> tig tip. Tidge. It's, it's a, a tidge tip. tip. And now that I'm talking about it, I'm not quite sure what those glands are, but something about it feels good to them. And mm. um, and so they they rub their face against things. It's like my dog; he rubs his butt against the grass. That's right. He's got glands down there. For Fortune's <laughs> got a dog who's <laughs> got a butt that's well, got gland. I've never had a cat, so I don't know. I, I don't know much about them. I just know that everything's on their time, right? You yes. get snuggle time with them when they feel like it. That's right. So my current dilemma is that there's a lot of conversation going on in the house where I live about getting a pet rabbit. Oh, and uh, okay. it's because there's these Instagram people who are like cuddling them and they're so relaxed and soft. But I know the reality is going to be this like skittish little guy. And I don't think they are that cuddly and it's going to be. They doing... can be. Really? My friends have a pet rabbit. What you're going to be dealing with is a lot of poop pellets. Yeah, a lot of poop pellets. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Um, yeah, I, I made my dad get us some guinea pigs when I was a kid, and then I said I would be the one to clean out the cage, and obviously oh, yeah. I never did it. And then he one time he got so mad, he went, they're just little shit machines. <laughs> and I never, he so machines. rarely swore. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> dad swore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I would like a pet wombat because they're um, you know, they're marsupial. Their poo is actually in cubes. They poo mm. in cubes, and they're Maybe. so cuddly. <laughs> they're really cuddly. A wombat? Yeah, but I don't. I think it's illegal. I think I'd have to be like Justin Bieber, like smuggling an exotic animal over the oh. border. Wait, does, does he, he yeah, smuggle animals? Thing? Well, he had a monkey that got oh my gosh taken from him at the airport and it was what the at the airport <laughs> yeah at, at the airport they were like no man he was like how do you we're show gonna, up we're gonna leave this monkey <laughs> <laughs> i mean what on what planet do you go to the airport and bring a monkey well he was just trying to bring a monkey back from vacation and then uh, you know they, how you wait do. <laughs> why are you so casual about that because you know he was like is it too late now to say sorry <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's one of his songs, but I even feel like a lunatic anytime I've had to put my cat in a carrier and fly them someplace, much yeah. less a monkey. I, yeah. I truly am like, this is insane that I'm bringing my cat on a plane. I know. That's when you know you've got too much money and fame. Everything's boring to you now. So you're like, well, obviously the next step is I'm going to need a monkey. Yeah. yeah. And you think I can just talk my way out of anything like no normal rules apply to yeah. you like I, I do you remember um led zeppelin rode their motorcycles into chateau marmont like right into the restaurant oh <laughs> no not know yeah. that 
Yeah. Do we 70s. remember that? Well, I don't know. What were you up to in the 70s? Fortune and I were dining. How was it born yet? We, we were dining together and... Um, <laughs> we were having some some snacks. Yeah. And you know, here comes Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but you know what? Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> right down the stairway to heaven. but you know what the fucked up thing is like they i mean maybe that was a different era where that was kind of celebrated but they didn't get banned from chateau marmont but britney spears she got banned because she put food on her face and she was just having a good time she got banned for putting food on her face for they, to this day will not let her back maybe google that but i well i'm not even gonna google it i'm gonna say thomas while we're recording this can you call chateau marmont and see if you can make a reservation for britney spears get her back britney in. spears maybe, you know what maybe she was just kicked out that day but was that recently no that was like when she was I th- going when she I was think they her let hair. her back because oh, i have? i believe uh I, I heard someone say that she was uh staying there like oh. maybe How do in the, you in know the last this? year I have Britney Spears on my Google alert. Oh my God. I love that on this podcast, you can confirm that she is not banned from Chateau Marmont. Thomas, will you please make a phone call and and try and see if you can book a reservation for Britney Spears? Under Britney Spears. Yeah. I, I know because someone. Party was- of two. I was, someone was staying there at the same time as her. It was during her recent divorce. And she, what they said, she was there. I have um, pop culture gurus Good on the ground. Good God, I guess so. <laughs> I did a weird, I did, I do a lot of like prank phone calls in my, in my spare time. And, Wait, uh, now currently? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And alone I, or with a friend or with with friends? That would be really <gasps> what troubling. What if they just did that alone? <laughs> <laughs> well, if but if hello, you guys, hello, if you, who is if, this? Is your refrigerator running? This is Debbie from England. <laughs> if the you hairdresser. Guys, if you do get a weird phone call one time that's like, it's your refrigerator, you'll know it's me. But I, I, the weird, it was, you know, when you are doing a prank and everyone's laughing and then it goes a little too far and you think, who, mm. who am I? So I called um, Soho House in LA mm. and I, I said, for some reason, I, I said, I'm, Adam Lambert's agent. Adam Lambert, kind of a niche celebrity. He was on um, American, American Idol. American Idol, yeah. He's not that niche. He's also the lead singer of Queen now. Oh, fuck, how do you yeah. know that? Because yeah, I what? love rock and roll. <laughs> Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. I also played Joan Jett's mom in The Runaways and of got course. cut out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I called and I said, Adam's going to be there in about 20 minutes. And I said, he's, he's a member. And they checked and he was a member. So it seemed like I really knew that. And then I was, I was making insane demands. Like I said, he needs a piano and oh my he needs God. sushi and he needs, he wants to practice playing your song. Sushi by isn't John. that insane. <laughs> I I'm know. Gonna a a, I'm going to need a bird of sushi <laughs> <laughs> and with wasabi and everything. It was really weird though. It got to the point where I was like, and they were oh, saying yes. They were saying yes, and 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 then kind of none of my friends were laughing anymore, and I just thought, what am you I went doing? Too far. What, yeah. what was the th- what was the thing you asked for that they were like, that's well, too far? No, sushi. sushi, a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be admitting this. Adam Lambert, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I did that. I'll call yeah. them back. I'll tell if, them. If they were weird to you at the Soho house, now you know why. <laughs> yeah. You remember when U2 made it so that everyone with an iPod just automatically had their new album on it? Yeah. That was they, not a good day. They should do that with Handsome for, for, gay, <laughs> for everyone. Wait, why was that not a good day? Because oh. a lot of people didn't want it. They, the songs weren't that great. It, it was one of their <laughs> worst albums. and. <laughs> It just felt so <laughs> presumptuous. Unless this is with or without you, no thing. You love with or without you. With oh. or without you. You know what I saw? Um, with what? or without you. Ah. I'm you forgetting. I this. can't leave. <laughs> every time Fortune with sings a song, oh. there's like, every time you sing Fortune, there's a, a natural point where I think the song will end like where i think you're gonna stop singing i would say <laughs> hope it would end and it always goes how on dare you 
I have one more celebrity news item that um, about a celebrity not obeying the rules, but it's just a funny one to me. It's uh, I saw it yesterday in the news that Pierce Brosnan mm, went yeah. to Yellowstone National Park mm-hmm. and he just thought, I'm going to walk past all the signs that say don't go here and I'm going to get in these hot springs. And oh. uh, he got caught. He was posting pictures from them and stuff. And um, they're well, that's saying his first mistake. That's his first big mistake. But he, I, he I probably, would say it was his second. His first mistake <laughs> was passing all of the do not pass these signs, and True. then getting in the hot springs was the second. Go ahead, me. I mean, that's pretty much the story. But they're saying that, that he might face jail time and fines. Yeah. And but um, also not like peers. six months ago, somebody put their foot in the hot spring and it like dissolved like in a cartoon to the no. down to the down to the bone. <laughs> no. No, I mean I might be. <laughs> That's might. not true. That would be the biggest headline <laughs> that everyone would be talking about. I will say of all that the things that got yeah <laughs> of all the things that I've said on this podcast, that was maybe the most made up. I like as I there's Take some went, <laughs> some kind of truth, but yeah, in my head it was like a cartoon. Like he put his foot in and then came out. And it was just a skeleton foot. <laughs> no hot springs for me. Only Irish springs. <laughs> Are you Irish? Irish springs. Did you ever see the commercial? I don't know. This might be a '70s commercial where the the guy is walking along and uses a knife to like cut uh, part of the soap, the bar of soap, like whittling a soap. Kind of yeah, whittling a soap. I'd yeah. like to do that now that you mention it. I've not mm. seen that. Did you guys remember uh, when Herbal Essence commercials were like the oh, biggest yeah. thing? Like a, they were like how in a shower and it was like Horny. orgasmic. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh no, Fortune, you've just forced us to picture you oh. having an orgasm. <laughs> you're wa- in you're welcome. <laughs> oh no, with a headset on? And then I have to sit down because I'm winded. Oh. <laughs> how much would herbal essence have to pay you guys to do one of those commercials and really commit to it oh full, um, herbal, like washing your hair full one million dollars <laughs> i do it no for charge four, take 400 million <laughs> yeah. no charge you gotta make something i do it i do it for a million one million you wouldn't do it for nine hundred thousand. Oh, as i said it i was like Five hundred thousand for sure. Wow, two hundred negotiated against yourself. Not they would do it for two hundred. No, two fifty. I even find. Have you guys ever on screen had to have an orgasm on screen? No like one fake? wants that from me. <laughs> we just got it from you. <laughs> we just got it and we loved it. It was like this though. I wasn't fully committed. I was more just well, like we splash- don't know. I was splashing water on my face. <laughs> um, I'm not. Yeah, I've not been in. I, it's funny because when I was on the Mindy Project, my character in the last season gets engaged, and I started laughing when I th- I realized at the end of filming that my fiance on the show and I never once kissed <laughs> or like had any sort of affection. <laughs> She's like, "Well, we're engaged. Uh, we're engaged. Good for us. We <laughs> sleep in separate beds, like Ernie and Bert. Yeah, <laughs> you had sexy time on." Yes, and, and that's what I'm saying is like having a pretend orgasm is so embarrassing in front of a crew of people, and and you, I don't really know what I look like when that really happens, and oh, it's just so I don't know if I could do the herbal essence thing. Did you have any problem being in the nude on camera? Yes, that yes, was, absolutely. That well, was no, weird. not it was weird because I wrote it, so I'd be like, oh, guys, this is hell, and then I'd be like, well, I did write this so I, I can't really complain but and now um, i gotta take my pants off yeah my pants my, my pants pan- my panties my panties yeah, my panties <laughs> are staying on i did find it so weird just dr- like just yeah. hum- humping so strange and then everyone else is like okay and cut and just moves on and you and the person are like eh, anyway they're eating, <laughs> they're eating a donut like good job you guys yeah <laughs> um speaking of donuts uh one time when i was in the very early days of my acting career Mm -hmm. i was on the sarah silverman program i played a police officer and there was a little tray of donuts behind my desk in the police station 
And between takes, I turned and took a bite of one of the donuts. And I was so new that I didn't realize that that was not for me to eat. Oh, shit. So all the continuity was... Well, they had to replace it. Yeah. Um, but I was so <laughs> embarrassed. But, you know, I have to say, a, a friend of mine, she was in a movie, and... um there was some note about her underwear needing to be thrown like on the floor. Mm-hmm. And she thought it meant her actual underwear. And she was oh, like, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she took her underwear off and tossed it on the floor. Oh my and God. <laughs> production was getting ready to start filming. And they were like, whose underwear is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! She had to claim her dirty underwear. Like, that was sitting, and she's like, "That's mine." I thought you said to like throw my underwear, and they were like, "In the scene with other underwear, not your oh filthy underwear." Oh, oh my god, <laughs> that's insane. Uh, you only learn by being in a mortified situation like that. Yes. Like, well, we'll do that again. I weirdly had a donut incident as well filming because uh, I had it, in the scene I'm walking and eating and talking and eating a donut and um, I am allergic to coconut as you know and so when they were getting the donuts they're like is there any are you allergic to anything I was like yeah coconut and so somehow it got lost in translation where they said to the chef we need donuts with no coconut yeah. and the chef heard donuts made of only coconut so the whole donut was constructed of macerated coconut there was no it was like the only ingredient and so i took a bite and i i didn't want to fuck up the take we were already so and i just wait you didn't smell the coconut no i was acting you know Uh, i don't know i just put it in my mouth and then i swallowed it and then i was so sick for days oh no no. but it's really funny to tell someone just no coconut and they go yep got it (laughs) so that's all just coconut coconut (laughs) coming up coconut (laughs) coming up and coming out go on we should get to our question let's do it all right well today's question is from a hilarious comedian who's iconic in the stand-up world uh margaret cho you know her from countless specials as well as uh, recent movies like Far Island um, and the TV show uh, Drop Dead Diva and Good Trouble. Uh, let's hear what the very funny Margaret Cho has to say. Hi, it's Margaret Cho. Hello, handsome pod. The handsomest, all of you the handsomest. Have you ever considered being a cad? Have you ever considered being a rake, using your handsomeness for bad, for evil? <laughs> to me, is a fascinating idea. A cad, a rake, can become a heel so easily. But it's a necessary part of being handsome. Is do you use the handsome for the good of the world? Or do you use it <laughs> for a sinister end? <laughs> yes. That's, that's what I, I, I would like to know. Okay. And also, what do you think? About my Feruza Balk shirt. I love this. <gasps> okay. Feruza Balk is a, a big crush of mine. And she was in The Craft. But also, she, when she was little, was in Return to Oz from the 80s, which is a very dark sequel to Wizard of Oz that oh. is... You, you forget how dark it is until you yeah. try to show it to a child. And then it's it real scary. Dark. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, I love that t-shirt. Whoa. What a question. That was amazing. I didn't know what the term rake was. No. Th- no. That's another word for cad. A cad, like a rakish fellow, I s- suppose. I have never heard that. I I have a Margaret Cho story. Yeah, give it to us. So I was 22 and I was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and I saw Margaret Cho was playing and I was like huge fan huge crush on margaret show just like i gotta go see her so excited and i forget maybe we had a mutual friend but we we met and she was so nice and mm-hmm. i was like i love you and she was like come out with us tonight i was like oh my god so i go home i get all dressed <laughs> up i'm freaking out i'm going by myself with like her and her friends and we go and see this like australian 
uh, drag show, but this troupe that mm -hmm. are super funny. And at one point they're pulling, they pull a ticket number out of a thing and they're like, whoever's number we call, you got to come on stage. And something, as soon as they said that, I was like, I know it's going to be me and I don't want it to be me. And <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure enough, it was me. And uh, I'm like, okay, I got to like be funny, but not look like I'm trying to be funny. And I don't know what this, what's happening. Yeah. So I, I go on stage and they put me in a chair and then this like muscly oiled up Australian guy is giving me a lap dance. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And it was great. But then at one point they give me a metal spatula and he bends over like to, and he's like spank me uh -huh. and so i'm you know i'm game i'm game and so i <laughs> i just misjudge it i pull oh, no. back and i i hit a too hard and b clip his balls between oh, his no. legs and he he like screams almost and like squeezes his legs together and the mood shifts every i'm like i'm a i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry and everyone just like no one's laughing anymore oh my god he's and, like limping yeah they and they were all looking at me like what the fuck's wrong with you and i was like i didn't mean i i didn't oh. mean to clip his balls oh I, <laughs> does margaret remember this i don't know i haven't i haven't brought it up with her oh my god she did she didn't say anything about about that. <laughs> I so mean, funny. in my mind, I was gonna like go out after the show with her and her friends, and I think I just crawled home to like hide because I it was but so embarrassing. Margaret's seen so many things. She's you so know, like, God. like I don't yeah. think anything could phase her. Mm -mm. She's the best. <laughs> no, <laughs> Margaret is like that true stand up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No matter what she's doing in her her career no matter how far along she is in her career she's always doing stand up she's doing theater she's doing open mics she's mm -hmm. you know she's not somebody that's like i'm too proud to to do this or she's just like she's got something to say she goes on stage she doesn't care i mean that's how it seems to me maybe she'd hear me and be like uh that is incorrect <laughs> but um but I don't think so. I mean, I she to me is like one of those true, true mm -hmm. stand-ups. Yeah, yeah. Cause she she came up in that San Francisco era mm -hmm. with those like yeah. unbelievable comics up there. Mm -hmm. Like that scene was crazy, crazy. Yeah. And she like she does music and she does all kinds of. Mm -hmm. She's like a real artist, I think. Um, yeah, like, yeah. I was I was telling her a couple of years ago how when I was meeting with managers. Um, who ultimately nobody wanted me. Um, <laughs> but uh, when we were meeting, they would say, you know, whose career do you want? And I would always say Margaret Cho. Mm. I love Margaret Cho's career. Like, I just loved that she did one woman shows and that she was such a diehard stand up. And yeah, yeah, was, she's awesome. Yeah, she's so good. Her question kind of requires that we actually believe that we're super handsome, which doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, maybe you guys, I, to me, as you know, I, I don't know. I see, I feel like I'm 13 all the time. So I don't know. Have you ever knowingly used your handsome for evil? Hmm. Well, well, to, to, to expand on what you were saying, you, you see yourself, that's like that your view of yourself is like a 13 year old. Is that what you said? Like, I think. If I maybe if I was like a cisgendered handsome man, then I would be corrupted by the power and, and mm -hmm. being raised in the patriarchy. You know what I mean? But I think mm -hmm. because I grew up like a pimply, uh, you know, with a ponytail and, and I think that I will always feel that kind of awkwardness inside me, which I think is yeah. a good thing so your I think 13 year old self will always hold you down <laughs> yes and prevent me from ever like you know what i mean from feeling yourself yeah too much yeah yeah um i mean i was <laughs> listen i'm not known for my looks um don't I talk about my friend like that <laughs> yeah do not talk about my friend i don't like mean that. that in a derogatory way i just mean like you know i've always been a big gal and because i didn't come out when I was younger I I wasn't able to like fully know who I was I think the most attractive version of yourself is when you're in your own power of like this is who I am 
you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you know what you're, you're bringing to the world. I think that's so attractive. And I didn't know that about myself for a very long time. So I didn't have, um, I, I, I didn't, I couldn't use my handsome for good, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> because I was unsure of myself and my confidence right. was lower. Um, and I didn't have that rapport with guys. They didn't see me in that way. So I had to develop my handsome qualities via my personality, my making people laugh, um, bringing, drawing people in that way. And so that was where I would be considered handsome more in those days. And I would try to use that for good. But could you use that for evil? Like you're, you are one of the most insanely charming people ever. Like I'm imagining you on Survivor or on <laughs> Traders or on one of these like <laughs> cutthroat reality shows. Yeah, you'd never. I would never suspect, but I imagine you're good at like matching people's energy, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean, making people feel comfortable. So I get you could probably. I have used it for evil in the <gasps> game Ma- Mafia. Oh, mm. exactly. Okay, if you're yeah. listening and you haven't played Mafia, it's just like one person's a bad guy and you got to, in a group... Sniff them out. Sniff them out. Yeah. Like, oh. I, was the ki- I was the killer and it was down to me and my friend. Fortune! <laughs> <laughs> and and our f- it was like a big group of friends that we were playing and that it was so heated. They, like, my friend was like, she's clearly the killer. Oh, my God. Like, I'm not the killer. And I'm like, you guys, I mean, come on. It's me. I really think I would do that. <laughs> like, and I was like trying to charm everybody. And they're like, you're right. You could never do that. And wow. then I ended up being the killer. And the whole room was like, oh, my God. So I have used it. For well, pretend, this is for all good to evil. know. And I'm going to keep an eye on you. <laughs> can we play? Can we get Thomas to add to the list like a a a game of mafia i would love to may all you have to say is thomas add it to the list (laughs) you don't have to say can we get thomas i don't want to overstep my station in this pod i feel like tig you have the authority to ask thomas to put stuff on the list no we all have the authority you just say thomas put it on the list right thomas yeah okay that's right yeah may you can order me to put stuff on the list that's oh all right all right right. put Mm -hmm. it on the list Tig, have you used your handsome for evil? Huh. Well, I mean, I think similarly to you, uh, I mean, would you call it being a late bloomer? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and I was for sure a late. It seems like we got three late bloomers here, and mm-hmm. I was uh, I was blooming late, and it was such a weird thing to come out and have people attracted to me <laughs> i was like what me what yeah you, i mm-hmm. um because my whole life and childhood i was just like the funny friend mm-hmm. tagging along you know rock and roll guys or the popular girls and so the only thing that i can even kind of say is that i got involved in ways with people that there wasn't long-term yeah, like potential yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. uh not necessarily on purpose yeah but um you're like this is fun for now yeah yes. you know that they're more into you than you're into them and i mm. bet there yeah as you're saying that i'm like i bet there's people in the a, world who would a, say that we have <laughs> a <laughs> trail of tears <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I bet i bet yeah but I bet y'all both broken some hearts. I don't, I've not really broken anyone's heart. You have never broken a heart, Mm -mm. Fortune. Never. I was always the, I was always the one that got dumped. Wow. Okay. Well, um, there was one relationship. uh, Oh, here we go. Here we go. It was more (laughs) true. No, one was like a mutual, like a mutual thing. It just wasn't working. We both knew it. But Mm -hmm. for the most part, I was the one, uh, but I was also dating people that were like, had one foot in one foot out already. Right. But that's yeah. what was appealing to you at the time. And yes. you didn't yes. realize it. Yes. Because I had my own damage and issues. I had to work through mm-hmm. to finally get to the point where I didn't want that or seek that out. 
And it, it became, eventually I did work through that stuff out, and that became very unappealing to me, thank God. Have you ever, like maybe Margaret's thinking like, like have you like hooked up with a fan? Like have you ever done that? Because I, I know that's a male comedy thing that mm-hmm. happens a lot, right? Like Yeah, male comics for sure. Male comics and their fans. I um, feel like I'm lucky that that dynamic does, is, doesn't do it for me at all. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I, I want to be the one that's like, <laughs> 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 I could kiss somebody once a week, like a show weekend, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like a fan. Well, mm. yeah. And I, I, I've certainly, I think any sort of interaction I've had with somebody was based on a genuine potential interest or attraction. It wasn't just yeah, like, same. oh, you're into me. So. I'm gonna right. drag you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, what would that look like if none of us have used these powers <laughs> for evil? What what would that look like? I guess I keep thinking. I I kind of almost can't even imagine it. Like what right. what would it be? I mean, I do think attractive people in some in a number of instances have a leg up. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, definitely. Like that, their their path in certain ways is a little easier. But they it could be golden handcuffs too. Like I, it, I mean, I don't want to speak for Parvati, but I think in the early two thousands, when when Parvati was on Survivor, and she was kind of known for being like vivacious and flirtatious, and it was such mm-hmm. a misogynistic time. And then that like label was so like they just sort of think of you as one thing. Yeah. And uh, it, it like a revol- involving looks and not the other things you bring to the table. Yeah. I really n- not use my handsome enough, I guess. No, now now you're just married with a dog and you, you can't <laughs> do anything with it other than prance your handsome face around the house. I use my handsome personality to to meet my my wife i'm Mm -hmm. grateful for that there they had in england uh for a very brief time there was like you know pret a manger that chain of sandwich shop oh yeah i didn't know that's how you said it or how it was pronounced yeah pret a manger means ready to eat i'm always like pret a manger pret a manger (laughs) 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 like the the baby jesus and his pret a manger um they had a thing where they they announced that the staff had the power to give a free coffee to their favorite customer of the day and so everyone was going and being so charming and handsome and (laughs) that's hilarious and yeah and i definitely would try and get that coffee and then you're kind of bummed when you don't get it but see you know who i would give that coffee to i'm always drawn to like cute old ladies are you yeah like i like that they melt my heart not in an obviously sexual way i'm not talking in that terms (laughs) Mm -hmm. but i have such a soft spot for old adorable ladies like ah i just if they need help like cross the street i'm just Mm -hmm. like i think i think see my grandmother in them you know of course i would be like giving them coffee i'd be like i don't care about all you other people and they'd be like (laughs) stop flirting with me (laughs) (laughs) one of my favorite uh moments when i was at an airport somebody was pushing a like 900 year old woman in a wheelchair uh (laughs) through the airport and she was pointing to go over to like coffee bean and tea leaf or something. And the guy rolls her up to the counter and I'm standing right behind them. And she just says, yes, uh, one ice cream cone, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Yes>. my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. You're like, give her what she wants. <laughs> yes. Make it happen. Make it happen. Heck yeah, that's amazing. It's just like in her mind, it's like still the twenties, and who, like, it's of like, course they would have an ice yeah. cream cone and an orange aid. She's like, here's twenty five cents, and keep yes, the change. One ice cream cone, please. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's hear what Margaret had to say. Yeah. yeah. My answer is yes. You want to be a rake. You want to be a cad. You want to be a heel. It's an essential part of being handsome. It's uh, 
an underrepresented area of handsomeness. Uh, to be a rake, we need more rake representation. Oh. And so I think that being a rake, being a cad, being a heel is essential and important. So that's my answer. Okay, I'm Googling rake definition. <laughs> <laughs> a rake, a cat, a rake, a cat, a heel. So we yeah. need them. We need them in our world. Margaret says. Oh, here we go. In a his mm. in a historical context, a rake, short for rake hell, analogous to Hellraiser, was a man oh. who was habituated to immoral conduct, particularly womanizing. Often, a rake was also prodigal, wasting his usually inherited fortune on gambling, wine, women, and song, and incurring lavish debts in the process. Wow, I'm obsessed! Th that should be a new May. F uh, May that should go in your May fact of things. Hundred percent. All right, is. I'm a rake. All right, let's. I mean, <laughs> I love. I just them. needed the definition, but I've raked around town. <laughs> You're like, well, that checks out. My inherited fortune I squandered on uh, wine. <laughs> All I right. love that Margaret's like, oh, we need more of that. I guess yeah. d maybe she means like we need people who like own own their shit and are are into themselves. Did you say a womanizer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that Brit Britney Spears song? Womanizer, womanizer. Yeah. I bet she sang that at the Chateau Marmont. See, just when there, when I thought it was going to continue, it stopped. It's never, it never stops when I, I keep thinking you on your well. toes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cad. Yeah, you're a rake. <laughs> so is that, is that what she's saying? Is just like a, a womanizer and, and you've got no problem um, just doing your thing. You're owning that you're hot. You're coming in. You're getting the gals. Maybe. I, I bet there's like a sweet spot between a rake and where I am now of like people pleasing. Like, I guess it is good to, to stop, you know, being like, uh, <laughs> there's this word like uh, owning, <laughs> like owning your. Uh, yeah. Cause there, there's a word, um, pusillanimous. And I love that word. And it means contemptibly timid. Cause it's I'm like, <laughs> it's like you're being super polite and timid, but it's actually contemptible. It's so annoying. You're pusillanimous. So mm. maybe somewhere between pusillanimous and rake hell hellraiser. I think she was saying there should be a balance, like you know. Yes, yes. There's a balance where you have some of that, and then other people who aren't, and that's kind of what makes the world go round. Well, because if everybody was unsure of themselves and not being confident and going, you know, like, hey, what's up? You, you know, everybody just kind of be in their own corner. Just hey, what's like, up? <laughs> not hey, hanging what's up? out. Hey, not what's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up, bro? That's how you know I was never a cad. <laughs> <laughs> I was always like, "Are you wanting to talk to them over the, behind me?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a balance because you gotta have those confident ones out there running mm -hmm. amok, mm -hmm. yeah, and giving some heartbreaks along the way. And then you learn from that and you grow and... And it helps you to get your heart broken. Oh, 100% it does. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's kind of a gift yeah. in a way. It's a terrible gift. A terrible gift. It is gift. a terrible gift that yeah. you want to exchange immediately. In a way, Linus gave you a terrible gift. <laughs> <laughs> Linus really did give me a terrible <laughs> gift. you got to frame it like that, yeah. Well, yeah. What a podcast. What a podcast. Everyone go out there and use your handsome for good and occasionally a little bad, but try to not be too crazy. <laughs> Just make sure you squander your inherited fortune on wine <laughs> and women. <laughs> we have a very cool uh, show coming up. Our live stream that we did over the holidays was so fun. Broke records. It broke did. records people said they wanted more mm -hmm. so we're giving people more we are doing another live show at the dynasty typewriter this time on february 12th it is a valentine's week mm -hmm. of love yes this will also stream all around the world and you can buy tickets not just the night of the show 
leading up to the show, the night of the show, and what, a week after the show? You can a keep buying tickets. And again, I'm I'm still floored. I can't believe that um our our show broke their ticket sales record. Oh man, it's crazy. Let's try and beat our record. Let's <laughs> I, <laughs> I want people watching from all over cuz once you, it doesn't matter if you're in the wrong time zone. You can you can buy the link and then stream it whenever mm-hmm. you want. Have a little watching party. Are you watching it on Valentine's Day? You watch it the weekend? Yeah after valentine's make sure you look handsome though yeah we want everybody to look handsome send us pictures i might wear a i might switch it up and wear like a cozy sweater oh Oh, yeah okay yeah we're gonna be taking uh people who are listening their questions uh as well so this show we're gonna focus on love because it's valentine's week uh even if you're single though we're gonna talk about it all you guys can ask us all kinds of questions about relationships about being single, about finding love. Maybe you can meet the love of your life through the handsome pod. I wonder oh how God. we can get singles yeah. together. We I want to connect people. Our first handsome baby to be born, like from two handsome listeners. Wow. We need to start a handsome dating site. Oh my God. <laughs> Where handsomes and pretty little ladies who listen to the podcast can meet each other fall in love how do we do that seriously thomas, that's a great idea put, put it, it on, on your list, list thomas figure it out thomas <laughs> so get your tickets you can go to dynastytypewriter.com uh and watch with us on february 12th live or for that following week you got to check out handsomepod.com and check out the new merch as well we got a, a little cowboy hat a pretty little lady sweater not to be confused with a cowboy hat no absolutely it's a not little cowboy it's a hat. hat that says little cowboy exactly yeah. it is a baseball hat but mm-hmm. it says little cowboy uh i think there's a ponty's sticker there's a lot of <laughs> yeah good there's gear. a new pack of stickers with ponty's may fact and what a podcast which there's mm-hmm. also a what a podcast mug i've been seeing our t-shirt a lot at my shows it looks mm-hmm. so cool and the yeah. handsome hats and everything they're go awesome. to handsomepod.com to to get all your stuff this mm-hmm. is something that's new for me. Stephanie and I have been starting to do a live show. Oh, um, nice. It's oh, called nice, yeah. She Said, She Said. And it's based on when I used to do, well, not used to do stand-up, but when I would do stand-up <laughs> and I would talk about Stephanie or our family and mm-hmm. Stephanie would be in the back row of the theater. <laughs> and uh, And I'd say, Stephanie, is that how you remember the story to go? And she would say, in the darkness, not exactly and then (laughs) we would hash it out in the show and so now instead of her sitting in the back row in the dark we both sit on stage and we talk about things in our relationship and about each other and then we share how we saw it and then the other one shares how they saw it that's great yeah that's at largo um is she said she said go to their website and then i'm also gonna be working on new stand-up at uh dynasty typewriter go to their website for my tickets and for handsome tickets i'm the same i'm just check out check out my instagram because i'm i'm at largo and the elysian doing improv and uh i don't know that i don't know the dates off the top of my head i'll be honest well i'm in the thick of my tour um it's going till the end of may uh coming up in early february i got denver colorado's tickets for the second show poughkeepsie new york madison and milwaukee wisconsin houston uh, Durham, we added a second show. Then I have LA, New York City, Toronto, and we just added a third show in Seattle. So you can go to fortunefeeds.com for those tickets. Oh, and Wilmington, North Carolina, there as well. <laughs> Lots of shows. You guys, we're just trying to bring a lot of handsome yeah, stuff to the world. You can for, catch us anywhere, basically. <laughs> basically. But I guess all that remains in the meantime is... Keep, Keep it, it 